Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Smith and we are going to solve linear equations in one variable. We're going to take a look at the types of solutions we could possibly have. I will show you good tricks to solving. Let's get started. So for linear equations in one variable, meaning we have to solve for a single unknown thing. Could be solving for x, t, n, whatever the variable is, just so you have one unknown thing that you're trying to solve for. Now when you go to solve these, there are th three possible outcomes. The first one is the most common. x is equal to a single value, a single real number. For this second possibility, you would end up with a true statement, for example, 0 equal to 0, okay, or some type of true statement, something that's true. In other words, 1 is equal to 1, true. So a true statement means infinitely many solutions. Any real number that I pick and plug it in to check would also become a true statement. The third and final possible outcome, a false statement, say something like x is equal to negative 5. You know, that's not true, right? We know that to be false. So then we would say there is no solution or that our solution x is an element of the empty set. So we could have x could be a single real value. You could have a true statement or you could have a falsehood. So we're going to solve the following linear equation. 5 minus 4 times 3x minus 8 equal to 21 minus 8x. First of all, make sure both sides are completely simplified. For example, first, we would like to get rid of these parentheses. To get rid of parentheses, we can distribute a negative 4. So negative 4 will be multiplied times 3x, then negative 4 times negative 8. Let me write it out for you. So I'm going to bring down the 5 and everything else. But here I'll write this part out. Negative 4 times 3x. Then we'll have negative 4 times negative 8. So I've just distributed negative 4 times 3x, negative 4 times negative 8. See that? two terms inside the parentheses means two separate multiplications on the outside. Okay, so we'll bring down the other side of the equal sign. And so let's go ahead and carry out these little multiplications here. So we'll have 5 minus 12x, positive 30, and bring down the right side. Anytime you've distributed, you always would like to combine like terms. 5 and 32 are like terms. So we'll have what? We'll have a negative 12x plus 37. 5 plus 32. And bring down the right. Now we can start moving our x terms to the left and our constants to the right. Remember that ultimately when we're solving a linear equation, we are looking for x equal to some real number. When you work towards the goal of isolating x on one side of the equal sign, those three options we just looked at, one of those will happen. And begin by getting this 37 off of their left side. So the plus 37, I'm going to have to take the inverse operation on both sides. So what I do to the left, I must do to the right. So if I'm adding 37 on the left here, I'm going to have to subtract it from both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up with the other constant. So it's subtracted. Here's your equal sign, right? We must subtract the same value from both sides to keep the scale balanced. Since it cancels on the left, right, 37 minus 37 is 0, so I'll have a negative 12x there, and then it'll pop up and just combine with the constant on the right, and that gives us a negative 16 and minus 8x. So now we want to get this 8x term, the negative 8x, we want that to move to the other side of the equal sign. So if it is subtracted here on the right, remember here's your equal sign, the inverse operation of subtraction would be adding it. 
So we'll add 8x. See how we want it to be 0 out on the right. And we would like it to come over to the left and combine with our other x term. Okay, so it will cancel, right? 8x minus 8x is 0. Okay, let's get our equal sign down here. And then negative 12x. Don't forget that negative sign. I guess we definitely want to write that clearly. Make sure that's a little bigger. There we go. <laughs> so we'll have negative 4x on the left. And a negative 16 on the right. All I have left now is to get the negative 4 off of that x somehow. So if negative 4 is multiplied by 4, right, it's multiplied, the undoer of multiplication would be division. So let's go ahead and divide by that value on both sides. So we're going to have to divide by negative 4. Must do that on both sides to keep the scale balanced. So negative 4 over itself is 1, right? Now look, if you're worried about the signs, a negative over, divided by a negative is positive, right? So these signs cancel themselves out too. But a number over itself is 1. 4 goes into itself one time. So that's why we do that. That's why we make these things happen. We use our identity properties. Now all I have left here is x. And then negative times a negative, these guys are positive, right? And we'll have a 4. So x is equal to 4. Let me make a nice 4 for you guys. There we go. All right, I had a video, uh, earlier video showing you guys how to check. We could check by plugging a 4 into the original equation, and it should check out. And it, I'm going to let you guys do that on your own And it's for the sake of time. Let's go to part B. Let's try these. I wanted to get to these fraction videos for y'all. Okay, here we go. So let's look at these problems. These are equations containing fractions. And a lot of times the question is, how do we make these a little more doable? Do we have to put everything over the common denominator or not? I mean, yeah, you could. You could put everything over the 12 in B, right? That would be your common denominator. You know, and everything would work out. It would come out the same. But Or we could just use the common denominator of 12 and eliminate the fractions altogether. So let me use my red pen for this, okay? So what you're going to do, this is going to be to eliminate fractions from an equation. If you just really don't want to deal with fractions the whole time, take a couple of steps in the beginning and get rid of them. Here's how. So what you'll do first is find the LCM, the least common multiple of the denominators. This is what you would have used for your common denominator. So we're looking for the LCM of 4, 3, and 12. In green, on the lower left-hand side of your screen, I've written a list of multiples of each of these numbers. I'd like to find the smallest multiple that they all have in common. And of course, I know you guys can see that it's going to be 12. But this is really how you can find the least common multiple of any number, whether you're comparing 2 or 3. But just make a list of the multiples. In other words, you count by that number, right? Count by 12s. Count by threes, count by fours. And the first number you come to, that the first multiple you have come to that they all have in common, like this 12, that's your least common multiple. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that LCM, the 12 in this case, and I'm going to distribute it into the left side of the equation, right? One fourth of x minus one third. And I'm going to distribute it onto the right. What this is doing is just making sure everything gets multiplied by the LCM. So 12 will actually now be distributed, okay? So you can, either, you can, I suggest you go ahead and write this step and the next step, especially the next step. Take your time and do this. That way you'll do it well. It'll be done correctly. You don't have to rush. 
So let's see, one-fourth, and look, that x is more in the numerator, so I'm going to kind of put it up a little bit. Note that I'm writing 12 almost in a fraction form. You can put it in fraction form. If it helps, you cancel. But you're going to do a lot of cancellation. So I suggest either put it in the fraction form like I'm doing here, or write it up even with the numerator to remind yourself that it is actually a numerator. And it should cancel with anything, any matching factors in the denominator. Okay, so here we go. Let's do that. Let's see these cancellations fly. All right. So in our first term here, 12 times 1 fourth x. The 4 goes into itself once, into 12, 3 times. So what am I left with? 3 times 1x, right? So 3x. Okay? Now the next term, 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 12, 4 times. What's left? Minus 4. Right? It's really 4 times 1. That's all you have left. Equals, and 12 actually cancels with itself here. And all I'm left with is a 5. Now, nice, huh? For a couple of steps that are just more long, they're longer than they are hard, it's not bad at all. So now we can just go for it and solve for x. Of course, what will I do here? I'll add 4 to both sides. Okay. Cancels. 3x is equal to 9, and then just divide by 3, right? 3's cancel, and now x is equal to... Good job, you guys. Let's go for the next one. Now, I had a student ask me a similar question to this, but it was with decimals, but it's handled similarly. He asked me, when I have to distribute through by... In that case, I think it was a 1,000... In this case, we're going to, the 3 is actually the LCM. When you have to eliminate a fraction and you have, it's not distributed yet. It's outside of parentheses like this. How do you handle it? Well, here we're going to use a 3, okay? And so let me write that step I wrote before where I had the parentheses on both sides, the equal sign, yeah. And let's go ahead and insert the left side just like it is don't change anything yet just kind of take it like it is okay and then 3 times negative 11 now look carefully this is like one third pretend 2 minus 5x is just a, a y okay as it's written you really would not multiply the red 3 into the parentheses, it does not enter the parentheses. What happens here is, let me get my pen. What happens here is we are just merely gonna have three, and this is this three, over one, okay, times one third. And then the two minus five X just kind of tacks on to that, that number, that one third. So these guys are gonna cancel each other out, the three over three. And then negative 33 is on the right. So what happens here is I have 1 times 2 minus 5x. So 2 minus 5x just comes right out of the parentheses, equal to negative 33. Next, I'm going to solve for x. So we'll subtract 2, minus 2, minus 2. Okay, it cancels here. Negative 5x is equal to negative 35. Now divide by negative 5, both sides, right? And what? Of course, cancel those fives. And x is what? Two negatives here. Division, it's positive. So x is equal to 7. Okay, everybody. If you have questions, let me know. I'm here for you. Um, keep up the good work. You guys have been doing very well. And... Um, Come see me in the virtual office if you need some help. I'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great day.